Hi there, I'm Beth and today I'm really excited to share with you my first free sewing pattern for the Pear Smart Doll. I'm still working on the trousers pattern you might have seen in last week's video, but these are the trousers you'll learn to make today. You'll need your fabric and some half inch elastic for the waistband, a ruler and the usual sewing notions. The pattern is super simple and you can either plot it out directly onto your fabric as you watch or onto paper to make a template for future use. Just bookmark this video if you want to come back and try these simple trousers later. For fabric, I've tried them in a medium weight cotton and a slightly stiffer silk-like fabric. I really like how they both turned out but I would also try them in something more drapey or even in a soft, light stretch jersey. Feel free to experiment with some different fabrics. I think Marvel in tea suits this style of dress. Dhoti were traditionally worn by Hindi men, but have since been adopted worldwide and been restyled in many ways. They're super flattering for any body shape, and I love these draped, gathered hips. These have simple hems and an elastic waist. We'll be measuring out a large square, so I'm using a quilting ruler to give me a right angle. Also, a rotary cutter for the long, straight cuts. They're faster than using scissors. Here's my half-inch elastic cut to around 13 inches long. We're going to cut two pieces of our fabric into 14 by 14 inch squares. This is the stiffer silk fabric I mentioned. And this is my paper template, though you can just mark directly onto the fabric as I'll show. Lay out your fabric, doubled up if you prefer, and cut out two 14 by 14 inch squares, following the grain of the fabric. Also, measure and cut a waistband piece measuring 2 inches by 15.5 inches. With a seam allowance throughout of a quarter inch or 7 millimeters, this waistband needs to slide up over the hips easily. I lay my squares down right sides together and when I'm at the sewing machine, I'll overlock or zigzag three sides of this waistband. Fold your squares along the diagonal like this. Grab your ruler and measure four inches along and one inch in from the open tip. Mark a rectangle like this using erasable marker or chalk. Round out that corner to create the crotch seam. Measure 11 and a half inches down from the same tip. and mark a line across this tip. The line should be about two inches long.
on the opposite end at a right angle to the unfolded edge. Mark a line about one inch long. That's it. Now cut across the lines we marked, cutting through all the layers. When opened out, it'll look like this. With right sides in, fold over the smaller one inch cuts we made and sew them both. Here they're both sewn and turned right side facing up. Next, grab some pins. We're going to gather up these top edges, the waist seams, from crotch to crotch. I'm facing my tucks towards the centre front and back, away from the little hip seams. Once we've gathered them to the correct size, we'll sew along here, 5mm in from the edge to lock them in place. I'll show you how I spaced mine out. I left 1 inch clear from the crotch seam, then pinned at 1 inch and 3 inches. I bring those pins together, creating my tuck, and pin it in place. I repeat the same pin spacing for the other tucks, at the front and back, and at the hips. I'm then left with an irregularly spaced tuck to make between them to make it measure 8 inches from crotch seam to crotch seam. Of course you could just eyeball all your tucks or make them more closely spaced, whichever you prefer. Here I have each side done and a 5mm seam sewn across the tops to hold those tucks in place. Each one measures 8 inches across. Bring them together, right sides in, pin and sew around the front crotch seam. I like to overlock and then top stitch this seam too. I've also overlocked the waistband. Align the long, raw edge of the waistband with your waist seam and sew straight across. Here, those seams are all sewn and the waistband is flipped up. Turn it over, have your elastic ready. We'll fold the waistband down over the back, have the previous seam allowance flipped up into the waistband area so it's covered. We'll pin it first before stitching. Here's a closer look. I'm folding it so that about a quarter inch of the overlocked edge extends past the previous seam, laying flat. I then pin it like this to make sure I'm catching the right amount of overlap. Pin it 
pin all along, then sew right in the ditch along this seam line here. It's now sewn and the inside is lovely and neat. Attach a safety pin to one end of the elastic and feed it through the waistband. Pin the end in place so it doesn't pass all the way through and pull it out the other end a little. Pin that end and then I recommend testing it against your pair model. Since your elastic and fabric may vary, you can check the fit before you commit to your final elastic length. Just be sure that there's enough stretch to comfortably pass over the hips. My final width ended up at about 11 and a half inches. Now we can close the trousers right sides in and sew the back crotch seam. Secure the elastic well, trim the excess and overlock the seam. Mine is sewn and I folded the seam over and top stitched it to lay flat at the waistband. Next we can overlock and hem the trouser legs before finally sewing the inseam. Overlock that seam and we'll be finished. Here it is, neatly finished and I ran two seams across my hems too. Turn them right side out and you'll have a lovely little pair of doti for your pear smart doll. I love these. I'm working on a second, slightly different pattern too, and might try some different gathering styles for the waistband as I test it out. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see more photos as I go, or over on Patreon, link in the description you'll get behind the scenes sneak peeks, exclusive videos and projects, and access to a secret shop with discounts and freebies too. Let me welcome my newest members there. Lo B, Annika Wainstrom, Kelly Sky Pie Blythe, and Angela Huggins. Thank you all so, so much for your wonderful support. You're all amazing. Please let me know what you think of today's video in a comment down below. Here's a little reminder of the pattern. Feel free to tag me on Instagram if you try it out and share pictures, I'd love to see. Also a reminder that I would be so deeply grateful if you could take a moment to vote for me as one of your favourite smart doll creators. I'll include the link in the description box below which takes you to a short form to complete. Thank you so very much to those who already voted. There's no limit on the number of creators you can submit and I'd love to join my friends on that list someday. Well, thank you all for watching. Please take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon. Bye!